this is a waves and superposition question and you start off by defining uh, or stating what is meant by wavelength of progressive wave. So usually we say wavelength is uh, yeah, one complete cycle, right? That would be the distance moved, actually. So we say the distance moved by your wave front. Wave front for one complete cycle. So during one complete cycle. Because don't forget, progressive means if you draw a wave that looks like this, this whole wave is propagating throughout. So you go like that. Okay, so wavelength. You can measure that. This is one mark. So that's B1 over here. Other ways you can talk about this is the, the minimum distance between two wave fronts. So these are what we could call wave fronts. Either crest or troll. La. Troll, troll. Minimum distance, that is one wavelength. Okay, let's move on to the CRO. So you have a CRO to analyze a sound wave and the screen shows this thing. Time-based setting is 2.5. What is the frequency? So in CROs, usually the axis, the horizontal axis is time. The vertical axis is usually voltage, millivolts or something like that. So if you want to measure frequency, we can measure it from here to here. All right. But wait a second, wait a second. If we measure those things out, we are only measuring boxes and CMs. So from here to here, let's say the time period, one oscillation. That is how many boxes are? I zoomed in a bit more. <laughs> it's actually two CM. If you count the boxes, uh, one CM is five boxes, one, two, three, four, five. So there should be 10 boxes. So this in total is actually two CM, but that's on the screen. We want time in milliseconds. So that's when you will need to use this beautiful, important time-based setting to convert your CM in the, on the screen into actual time measurement. So we multiply by 2.5 milliseconds per CM. So see centimeter negative one, that's on this side. So CM and CM will cancel out, giving us milliseconds, which is what we want. So this will give us five milliseconds. But we're not done. We want the frequency though, so f equals to 1 over t, which is 1 over 5 times 10 to the negative 3. And that will give us a value of about 200 hertz. So here's two marks, one for final answer of course, and one for if you knew how to read the value of t. So it's kind of like around this, this, this working here, you substitute, multiply by time base. Yeah, that's one mark there. Okay, moving on. Now we go to the interference part of the question. So here, oh, what do we have here? To the source emitting sound is at A. So A is where the waves come out. Waves travel from the source to C, two different paths. So you can kind of see that the first path travels this distance. Very quickly, you reach the end. The other path is going down here actually, hit against the reflecting surface and then only reach C. So one is definitely much longer. So distances and angles are given, assuming there's no phase change due to the reflection at B. Wavelength is 1.6. So show that the wave meeting at C have a path difference of 6.4. So if we line up both of these waves, we'll see that actually the green one travels a much larger dif difference, dis distance, and we need to find what is the path difference in length. So that could be somewhere, I guess, from here to here, I suppose. Path difference. So you just minus off. The blue one travels 20.8. The green one is what? How much? We need to know this side. If you recognize this is a right angle triangle, you can use Pythagoras theorem to help you find what is this side here. So let's use Pythagoras. Hypotenuse is 20.8 square minus 8 square, which is one side, and you square root the whole thing. This would give you a value of about 19.2 meter. So in total, uh, what is the path difference? This one travel 8 and then 19.2. So in total, 19.2 plus 8. That's 27.2 meters traveled by this fella down there. Path difference, you minus both. So now you can take... 
20.2 minus 20.8 and that will give you 6.4 meters. Proven? Yes, correct. Very good. So this is one mark la. If you did, you minus path difference, find Pythagoras and minus. If everything is correct. Okay, let's go. Explain why intensity maximum is detected at point C. Intensity maximum, when you see this phrasing, it, they are really talking about constructive interference. So they're asking you, why is it constructive at point C? So we kind of have to go, okay, let's go zoom into this. Big, big. Okay, so how do you know if it's constructive or not? You have to check the path difference. So one wave travel a bit further, right? Like we say. This one, in terms of lambda, what is the path difference? We go back to our lambda. Where's our lambda? Do we have lambda somewhere? Maybe. They didn't, they didn't really say. Okay, never mind. If they didn't give us lambda, then we have to find it. Oh, wait. They did. Lambda is 1.6. So we can find it. Okay, 1.6 is one wavelength. So this path difference is 6.4. Let's write that down here. 6.4 meter. How many wavelengths can fit inside 6.4? Let's do a simple division to check it out. So let's zoom in here and do it. Lah. Okay, so what do we do? You want to find in terms of wavelength, you have to take 6.4, divide by one wavelength, which is 1.2. Oh, sorry, I mean 1.6. Uh, yeah. And you will get 4 lambda. Hmm. Interesting. So that means this part here, there will be 4 full cycles. So I can, I can draw it like 1, 2, 3, 4. Full cycles. And this is a multiple of lambda. Which means if the source are in phase, this 4 lambda will mean it is constructive interference. So let's go write that down there. You kind of have to know like it's a whole number integer multiples of lambda. So let's write this. So we talk about the path difference first. The path difference, which is uh, 6.4 meter. Let's write that here. 6.4 meter is four wavelengths, four full wavelengths. So the waves from both paths will meet in phase. Peak meets peak, crest meets crest, throw meets throw in phase. Hence, constructive interference occurs. Interference occurs and constructive refers back to intensity maximum. So there's two marks here. There's quite a few points you could talk about. Uh, all you need is two. The first one, if you mention four lambda path difference, okay, this is your delta L, that's one mark already. If you talk about meeting in phase, what does four lambda mean? Waves will meet in phase, that's another one. And you talk about, oh, constructive interference, I mentioned that it could be another one. But maximum you can get is two. Lah. So total up. Now let's see, determine the difference between the time taken for the sound to travel from source to point C along two different paths. Determine the difference between the time taken. Oh, because all, you see, one wave travel short distance, the other wave travel quite a long distance. But what is the speed of the wave? We need to know that. Let's find that first. Huh? So V equals F lambda, or F over T also can. This will be the frequency which we found earlier, 200 hertz from the CRO, times 1.6. This will give us uh, 320 meters per second. And this is the speed where the wave is going to travel uh, on its path. So we go and look at this again. So in the first part, you're going to travel 320 meters per second, covering a certain distance. The second part, you'll cover a much larger distance. I'll just use the one on the right. 320 meters per second to cover a distance of 27.2. Is there acceleration or is the speed constant? I mean, speed of wave usually remain constant. So we can use some kinematics equation to help us out here. So we know the distance you need to travel. 
Usually we use s equals to ut plus half a t square, right? Kinematics, remember? But there's no acceleration, so this part is non-existent. You can throw it away. And the initial and final speed is the same, so you can just say, I guess vt also can. So distance travel is v times t. We're not going to say displacement. Nah. We're thinking in terms of a straight line horizontal. So for the first wave, you are traveling 20.8 at 320 meters per second. So let's put that there. 20.8 at 320. What is the time taken? It will be about 0 0.065 seconds. For wave number two, you do the same thing. Okay, wave number two. Is wave number one. This is going to be ooh, what's the path already? Ah, uh? twenty-seven point two. Much longer time to take to travel here. Twenty-seven point two. Okay, okay. So we put twenty-seven point two. Same velocity, three hundred twenty times time, and you get a time of zero point zero eight five. But be careful. We want time difference, so we gotta minus it. So time difference, just take. Let's call this T2 and T1. T2 minus T1, you should get 0 0.020 seconds. Be careful to write 2SF, okay? 0 0.02 is 1SF only. We need 2SF, so put a 0 there. Otherwise, you might lose the mark, maybe. So A1 is for your final answer. You found the velocity of the wave, both waves. That's a C1 mark. Let's go to the final challenge section. The wavelength of the sound is gradually increased. Calculate the wavelength of the sound when the intensity maximum is next detected. Wow, okay. So this wavelength we draw is quite small. If you increase the wavelength, it might look something like this. And then here like one and then two. Okay, something like that. Lah. You make the wavelength longer. But what is not changing though is the path difference. The path is the fix. This one travel 20.8. This one travel 27.2. So path difference here, delta L. Where's my delta L? Hello, hello. There we go. It's going to be fixed at 6.4 meter. So in that sense, uh, let's draw a, a diagram to help us out here. Path difference is fixed. And for intensity maxima, you need to be a multiple of some wavelength. So... Currently, we have four lambda to fit inside there, right? Where's my four lambda? There we go. Path difference, 6.4. For the old one, is four lambda. So, origin path leader is one, two, three, four. Wow, it fit nicely. Four nice wavelengths. Hey, here, here, here. Sorry. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is four lambda. So the next one is going to be a, either 3 lambda or 5 lambda, right? But what is changing? Wavelength is increased. So let's use pink color for new wavelength, shall we? Increase. Uh. So means you have to make it longer already. You, know? you could maybe do this. 1, 2, and 3. There. So you, if your wavelength is increased you can only fit lesser wavelength inside there. Can you fit 3 lambda? So now 3 lambda will be within this fixed distance, which is 6.4 path difference. So let's find the wavelength of the sound. What is the lambda? So 3 lambda equals to 6.4 path difference. Okay, still constructive because still multiple of lambda. 3 lambda, 4 lambda, 5 lambda. And then we will have lambda equals to 2.1 meters. So write the answer here. So this will be one mark. This one is, let's write something, wavelength increase. The next one, longer. If you want to think about what happens if the wavelength becomes shorter, and then you draw another one. No? If wavelength becomes shorter, the next maxima will occur when you can fit just nice five wavelengths into the path. How do I draw five? Uh, I think something like this. One, two, three, four, five, maybe. One, two, three, four, five. So here is five wavelengths, and that you can only fit that if your wavelength, each of them, 
becomes shorter. Right? So be careful of the trick. Huh? Wavelength increase means you can fit lesser of them within the 6.4 path difference. Okay, so I think that's all for this question. Total up this one. It's a pretty good one to practice your understanding of interference, the basics, and go try out some others for double slit interference as well. So that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.